Federal Employees Distributing Company, known as Fedco, was a membership department store chain that operated in Southern California from 1948 to 1999. Welcome to Eric C. Productions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified of my latest video that are posted during the week. Please leave a suggestion or a comment and maybe you might see that video in a future posting. Thanks for watching and now back to the program. Fedco was founded by 800 U.S. post office employees who wanted to leverage their buying power by purchasing goods directly from wholesalers and eliminating the additional markup of a retail store. The Fedco chain was unusual in that it was a non-profit consumers cooperative. The board of directors, headed by Robert Key, established the first store on Slauson Avenue in Los Angeles. As demand grew, the board of directors began to carry merchandise in the store. Business flourished and they took over adjoining storefronts. Under the guidance of Key, FedScript was developed. This allowed a form of borrowing but ensured that the funds could only be spent at Fedco. Lines included general merchandise, groceries, and in some locations, auto services and furniture. Lifetime membership was less than $5 for employees of the U.S. government, students, and their family members. The organization of the company was similar that used for credit unions in which the stores were owned and operated by a not-for-profit organization that was owned by its members who elected a board of directors. Like a credit union, store membership was legally restricted to a defined group. Over the years, the membership pool was widened to include anyone who had any relationship with the federal or local governments, as well as their employees, children, etc. It also included anyone who received regular payments from the government, such as Social Security, pensions. Membership cards were required to enter a store and to use a check as payment. However, it was very difficult to restrict non-members from purchasing from the stores in cash since the lifetime membership cards did not include photographic IDs like those used by later membership stores such as Sam's Club or Costco. Anyone could borrow or take a member's card and enter. Names in the cards were only checked when paying by check. The management strove to make Fedco a one-stop shopping destination similar to a hypermarket concept. The customer member were presented with a wide variety of consumer products, camera equipment, office machines, major and minor appliances, garden supplies, clothing, jewelry, liquor, and groceries. The stores also had a full service deli and a separate produce department. Many stores also had a tire and battery shop. The corporate buyers often found one of a kind deals on miscellaneous items, including seasonal items like toys during the Christmas holiday season. The stores were tightly managed to foster smooth operation. Romantic interest between employees was discouraged and married couples were not allowed to hold Fedco jobs concurrently. Some of the departments around the periphery of the store were not Fedco businesses, but instead were concessions operated by others. For example, the stereo components department were run as Kostron, seller of Sounds Craftsman line of stereo equipment. Kostron paid rent to Fedco to operate in the building. Other concessions included the optical department, later bought out by Fedco, the shaver shop, and the key and lock shop. Fedco offered a number of private label items, including electronics, liquor, watches, and some groceries. The membership model was successful for Fedco for decades. It was common for the stores to be crowded with long lines at checkout. There were separate registers for general merchandise, groceries, and produce. At one time, purchased merchandise was placed in a bag and a color-coded tape was placed on the staple bag. The tape color varied from day to day to prevent theft. In later years, as merchandise was bagged, the bags were stapled shut and the receipt stapled on the top. In the precursor to the common practice at most membership clubs today, the seal bags and the receipts were checked at the exit. Fedco had an aggressive pricing model and employed secret shoppers to determine prices on retailers. The Fedco 
price on many items ended in 87 cents to claim the lowest price, even if it was only pennies below the customary 99 cents prices of competitors. For most of its lifetime, Fedco was closed on Wednesdays, though some employees would work restocking or taking inventory. During the Christmas season, Fedco was open seven days a week to accommodate the customer surge. Fedco would sometimes require employees to work up to 10 hours a day. Working six days a week was possible during the summer surge and the Christmas season. In 1994, Fedco was one of the first membership stores to actually start accepting bank-issued credit cards. Most discounters of this type did not accept credit cards because transaction fees charged by the credit card transaction processors were quite high in relation to their margins, and they would have to raise prices to compensate, putting them at a competitive disadvantage to stores that did not accept credit cards. Fedco's lifetime membership cost $10 in 1998. At its peak, Fedco had 10 department stores plus 3 appliance-only stores and had served 4 million members. Fedco had several locations in Southern California. The 10 main stores included Van Nuys, La Cienega, San Bernardino, Cerritos, National City, Pasadena, Costa Mesa, Ontario, Escondido, and Buena Park. Previous locations included San Bernardino, LA, Lakewood, and San Diego. The video you are watching is footage of the LA riots in 1992 where people are looting Fedco in Los Angeles. Fedco filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1989, at which point it had been the longest operating membership-based store in the country. Most of the locations were sold to the Target chain. If you had that $10 lifetime membership at Fedco, you could exchange it for a $300 Target coupon book at the 1999 bankruptcy. Not a gift card, but a coupon book. What a deal. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.